I'm going to show you a sensational new move in the mainline Spanish that led to a brilliant short victory. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Subscribe button's down there and don't forget to click the bell for instant notifications. So this game was played in round one of the European Team Championship, just started in Batumi in Georgia. And it's between Jonas Biero, who's just become Denmark's youngest grandmaster, and Daniel Dubov from Russia, part of this young generation of Russian players. He's 23 years old. And Magnus brought him into his team for the World Championship match uh, last autumn. So that just shows um, if, if the world champion thinks he's good enough, well, that's good enough for us. So let's take a look at this game. So uh, Biera, who's just uh, won his Grandmaster title after a, an excellent result in the Isle of Man tournament, playing with the white pieces, and Daniel Dubov didn't have a very good tournament in the Isle of Man. Clearly wasn't very happy there. I think he scraped 50% in the end, but he was really out of sorts. So, yeah, interesting to see these two players who basically just got on the plane from the Isle of Man and went straight to Georgia and meeting in the first round. So all normal so far, absolute mainline Spanish. And here, if C3, of course it's possible for black to play the martial gambit. Um, but Biera plays A4, which is one of the, well, standard ways of, well, of uh, avoiding the martial so-called anti-martial move. And here the normal moves are either b4 or bishop b7. But Dubov plays d5, so he's playing a kind of martial gambit. Now, this has been seen before. It's a very rare move. Doesn't have a good reputation. Um, let's look at the white's alternatives here. Well, you can just take on b5, but in this position, certainly black does have some compensation. This has been tested before. Reasonable compensation for black. You can see that white is very much behind in development on the queen side, whereas black's development is pretty straightforward. So that's one thing. Bishop takes d5 has also been played before. And, well, Black grabs the two bishops, and this also offers reasonable compensation. Um, again, black, white's queen side development is very poor. So Biera played pawn takes d5. And here e4 has been tried before, but that doesn't give black enough compensation after pawn takes knight. Knight a5 is the first move which is absolutely new. This is a fresh position. Um, and well, Dubov was making his moves instantly. Not pleasant to have to face this for the first time. Um, Biera played knight takes pawn um, after a few minutes thought. And Dubov took the bishop. Now, here, Biera thought for about 15 minutes. He probably had assumed that knight c6 was possible in this position. He didn't play it, and that's quite correct. Um, he just took here. But let's have a quick look and see what happens on knight c6. I mean, it looks potentially winning for white. In fact, it's not a good move. First of all, Knight takes rook is not good. You take the queen, and actually, in this position, white is doing well. But here's the trick, and here's probably what Biera overlooked when he went in for this. Bishop g4 is, is a very, very strong move. Here, if knight takes queen, you take, and in this position, actually, 
black is doing pretty well. And once again, it's all to do with development. White's development is very poor here. If after bishop g4, f3, you give a check. And in this position, well, if d4, here's a sensational move. Knight takes d4. So if knight takes, then queen takes and, well, black has, has just fantastic initiative here. Black has, hasn't actually given any material up. And here's a nice variation. If knight takes queen, then takes double discovered check. Knight takes and rook takes. And in this position, well, black has rook and bishop against the queen, but just a, a very powerful initiative, um, probably winning because... Um, you know, you can start hitting the queen, the back rank is very weak. And again, white's development is very poor. This is the, really the theme of this game. White's uh, development on the queen side is just way behind black's. So after knight takes bishop, pawn takes knight. Bishop to b7 covers the c6 square, that's important. And just starts developing, basically. So Piero played knight c6. That's probably not a bad move. At least you get rid of that dangerous bishop. And now bishop c5. Well, this is really scary. <laughs> so black is basically entering the middle game and starting an attack. While white's development, yep, here we go again, is non-existent. They're on their starting blocks. In fact, white can survive this position incredibly by giving up this pawn here. And, well, it's still a little bit tricky. I mean, here's a funny move, knight e4. So if rook takes knight, you play bishop takes. But actually, you can block this out with bishop e3. And white should survive this position. Uh, but instead, after five minutes, now this was careless, pawn to d3. You obviously thought he had enough time to get away with this. But Dubov replied instantly with bishop takes pawn check. Now there is a shocker. Um, Got to be taken. And queen d4 check. Now, in fact, white can survive this position if he finds a series of only moves. Now, I think in practical play, this is impossible, basically. Um, here, Biera played bishop e3 and lost. King g3 is still a draw. I mean, I think this is uh, inhuman. Actually, you're never going to find this. After rook a e8, it looks as though white's king is just getting killed. Incredibly, rook f1 still holds. Um... I mean, black can try various things here. This will force a draw after this. And it's actually a draw by perpetual check. But really, I, th I mean, I think this move, rook f1, is very difficult to find. And, and black can try various things in this position, but should hold. After queen d4, bishop e3 was played, and knight g4 is a winning move. There are some very nice ideas here. Takes here and rook a e8. And basically, black just exchanges off white's rook here. Um, and, and white's king is defenseless. So, for example, if rook takes rook and then knight d2, well, we just check the king up the board and uh, rook e6 I mean there are various other variations but it just shows you what happens if if white tries to bring out pieces so rook e8 played rook e2 and there is now a really beautiful winning move can you spot it before I play the move black to play and win g5 great idea 
queen f4 and queen h4 checkmate threatened. So rook f2, and now it's just a case of bringing the king up the board. Uh, there, there is no decent defense here. And after queen h4, actually white resigned. So let's just take a look at how it might have finished. Queen f, king f3 loses to queen f4 mate. So king f5. Now f6 is a nice move, threatening rook e5 mate. If white tries to give up the queen, well, let me play it to mate. Let's, let, let me show you a nice checkmating position. Of course, you can just take the queen here, but let me show you, um, I think, the most beautiful checkmate, the most elegant. And then mate on h7 is very appealing indeed. So what a sensational victory. And I mean, Dubov said after the day, you are not the worst day in the office for me. Yeah. Uh, but he said, if it works, it's a groundbreaking discovery. There you go, hot off the press, check it out. That might make you think twice about playing an anti martial line against um, yeah, Black's repertoire here. Thanks for watching and don't forget, like, comment, share and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, do check out the links to PayPal and Patreon.com. Thanks for watching.